Look right. forward to that, but we can hop right over to our draft. Yeah, here. we can. So we have SMG versus Clairvoyant Gaming. Let's see who got first pick, first ban. It looks as though Clairvoyant is given first pick, first ban, and they choose to go with Tassadar. Once again, every game. Very Not every game, very close, but they seem to more often than not want to ban out Tassadar. Once again, first map is on Cursed Hollow. So we've discussed in the past why it's a strong map to take or to ban out Tassadar. He has that extra vision, if you, especially if he goes to Mental Acuity, uh, Talent at level 4. He also has the extra range that he can grab on the Psy Storm, uh, which the one game we saw Tassadar play didn't. He went with a Mana Regen, but still. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons to take Tassadar on this map, so maybe they ban him out. They're just only dealing with him. I'm not sure. But either way, we've seen it more often than not banned out from Clairvoyant Gaming on this map. SMG follows up with a Zera Tool ban. Very interesting. Um, this leaves all the big name assassins that we tend to look at available, and of course, Vala picked up as the their priority pick for an assassin uh, for Clairvoyant in a response with Tychus Nazebo. This is so similar I know. to the last it's like draft. Identical. It's like they're are they just going to go with uh, stitches and then perhaps another DPS? I don't. I'm not sure. All right, so Tychus. I mean, that's they're setting up for it, and God, you know they had to have been watching the end of that game. As far as I know, SMG finished before. Clairvoyant did, and they don't. They go with Arthas Uther. Maybe they don't feel comfortable playing Stitches without Zeratul. I think they have had. Interesting. Um, this is going to be the first time we've seen Arthas played by Clairvoyant today. And No, that's not true. They played them against uh, Glorious. Did they? Yeah. So that was the first game of the day. Or second game. Second game, yeah. Damn. Dropping balls. Dropping <laughs> all the balls. <laughs> well, Falstad Stitches will be the response. We're looking at Falstad Stitches, Nazebo, and Tychus. There's so much damage with Ravenous, Shock and Awe, and Odin just throwing it out there. And then you got Stitches not, yeah. not going to be on the side of Clairvoyant this game. It's almost like a counter pick to pick it up on the side yeah, of but Symbiote. But they could have grabbed, and Clairvoyant could have grabbed Stitches. They could have. They've had, I mean... You're, you're you're hot right now. You're you're feeling it with stitches. You're getting the hooks. Why not keep it going? You had an opportunity to grab him right there. Obviously, Atlanta. Atlanta's feeling very comfortable playing stitches. Could we just call Atlanta hot? I'm just gonna point that out. Oh yeah. You kidding me? That last stitches play I saw that game. <laughs> well, call him whatever he wants me to call. Well, false stat stitches again. Uh, you know, just lots and lots and lots of damage. But on the other half, I mean, Arthas, Vala, Uther, all three huge heroes. Uh, of course, we do need the support for Symbiote, so it's very obvious that we'll be seeing something like Mad Furion or or Mad Wing. Y yes, that doesn't really <laughs> we do see that pretty often out of SMG. They know that a lot of teams don't prioritize Mad Furion, so they can get away with picking their their support last. And Paired with both Nazebo and Stitches works really well. You can you can sure. spin them on the grass. There's a lot of big plays you can make. Right. Uh, you have the the wall, the zombie wall with mm -hmm. the with the root as well. Another big combo. Um, a lot of a lot of Whoa. synergy with Malfurion. Whoa, sorry to cut you off there, sir, but we have a Chen Toronda. When was the last time you saw Toronda played in competitive? <sighs> it's well, been a couple months, I think. Now. I'm intrigued, but every single time I see Tyrande, I get excited, and then I get disappointed. <laughs> I get disappointed because it never ends up working out as well as it might be able to. Uh, so we'll see how it actually pans out for them in this game, of course. But I'm I'm not sold on Tyrande as a hero just yet. And then yet. the final pick from SMG was Brightwing. Not not, not Furion, not but Malfurion. I mean, they had the option to. It wasn't uh, picked. Brightwing, of course, is a very, very strong support, as is Uther. And then third, you normally will see maybe a Rhaegar if there's a Bloodless Comp or uh, Malfurion. But more often than not, SMG had been going Malfurion in these situations, but they opted to go with Brightwing. It makes sense. They have the Nazebo. They want to just provide a little bit of extra crowd control to make sure he can get those Ravenous Spirits off. Um, Stitches is there for that as well. Uh, whether he goes Putrid Bile just to have a little bit more CC in the Pulverize with the extra Slam increase, we'll see. But uh, there's a lot of options available to SMG to control the pacing of the fight to get the maximum value out of that Ravenous Spirit. And then on the other side of the map for Clairvoyant, we have just a lot of... Damn it, I just want... What are they going to do with that <laughs> Taronda? I just... I, I mean, a lot of the Taronda is like, okay, the ability to have the maximum vision with Shadow's Talk. You don't have Tassadar for the vision, so now you have Taronda with Shadow's Talk, but that's a much longer cooldown. You also have the Headwake able to travel across the map, interrupt those tributes, install. Maybe they're looking for that. Maybe they're going to try to just... 
do some crazy stuff with it. I, yeah, but I, in, in I, the place of another damage dealer? I know. It's, I mean, Hunter's Mark is amazing, but yeah, granted, you, you really have to hope you get the lockdown. Now, you have the lockdown from Arthur's Howling Blast and Shen getting the front line with, so the, with the flying kick. Damage. You have to get that Hunter's Mark and have to remove someone, so at that point in time, you can really focus on something like Stitches. 25% mm -hmm. additional damage to that target for 5 seconds right, right. is strong, uh -huh. but again, it's... It's not another big damage dealer. Like, it's... All I right. mean, we'll see. We'll <laughs> yeah. see. All right, we'll talk about that in a sec. Let's introduce the teams real quick here. So for Clairvoyant Gaming, we have Clown once again on Vala, Caterpillar on Arthas, Rusty will be playing Uther, Spanker on Chen, and Atlanta will be playing Tyrande. And on the other half of the map, we do have Dreadnought playing as Stitches, Brightwing played by Mad Timmy, Soldier will be on Falstead, KO playing as Nazebo. Put it that. Oh, we haven't done that in a long I time. Know. I know, he's <laughs> just like picked all the time. I, I was just like, our throats are sore, please, guys. <laughs> he used to be high. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, too much. <laughs> and Arthlon. And uh, you know what? Hashtag production things. I'm actually going to pop up the menu and disable oh. this little guy here. What? There we go. There we go. And, uh, <laughs> made it through the tournament to the finals before disabling that, but today is not the day to keep it on. All right. Now, so, let's, yeah, let's talk about. Yeah. So, of course, we're seeing the very typical. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Timmy. Timmy. Wow, we almost Gosh, we they're almost not even giving me a chance to talk about their talents. They've taken some weird ones, too. <laughs> okay, uh, once again, Clown is going with the Rancor build. We've, we've discussed that in the past couple of games as to why he might go that. He tends to go for a split, multi-shot, auto-attack build. Uh, that's fine. Oh, Caterpillar finding himself under a little bit of pressure yeah. here. Can they get him out? They're going to need to see a... Wow, Arthlon! Oh my goodness, Arthlon taking a lot of damage as well. But of course, with Mad Timmy here, he does have the Polymorph and just the you know additional just damage. that he just exchanged a lot of damage there. No one ended up dying, but... Each team found one person that was at least out of position. Okay, so uh, what else? It, it looks as though we're going to have a, an owl build coming out of Toronto. Yeah, I mean that's the only way to play Toronto. Uh, so you level will one, almost never see a Toronto opt to play as a support. Mm. Um, well, I mean, I was thinking maybe he goes for some kind of damage build, gets the reduced well, uh, the cooldown. The owl build is a damage. No, no, no. I mean, like going for Hunter's Mark reduction, the, the cooldown. It's yeah. I, I, I wasn't. Hey, you hey, know they're right, playing Toronto right, in right, general. Right, I'm you're confused. Right, you're right. <laughs> so these, yeah. so, uh, we see the Devour upgrade for for Stitches. That's uh, Dreadnought's playing. Him. That's an extra amount of healing over 10 seconds. Maybe he'll get amplified healing level four. I'm not sure what the plan is there. Double bribe coming out of Brightwing and Falstead. Uh, not too uh, bad of an idea to take that on this map. It's, yeah, it's a lot of, like, it gives you a lot of plays because mm -hmm. SMG is very good at knowing when the map mechanics are going to spawn. They have right, very right. good game sense with that. And they can say, okay, we're going to grab Giants mm -hmm. because, you know, the tribute's right. spawning or whatever. Yep. That said, uh, we are hitting the 2 minutes and 15 seconds. KO mark. super low. He's going to fall yeah, here. That said, he's right wing go down. can try to, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's Caterpillar. Oh. Is he dead? Oh, he's yeah. dead. <laughs> Wow, it's a crazy. Is he dead? <laughs> crazy. Well, I mean, it was it was close. Yeah, that was, was real close. The point where we can't see his health bar. That's that's cutting it close. Okay, so yeah, Stitches did end up going with the amplified healing, so he's gonna be going for a super tanky build. He's not really trying to get much damage output, which they have plenty of between Falstead and Azebo and Tychus, so that makes a lot of sense to me. And the tribute is spawning here in yep, the bottom. It's a late of the map. one. It's yeah, it's it's a it's a later end. Uh, of the spawn cycle, and I'm at Timmy tapping the wall to make sure he has lots of mana and health ready for this. Look at this zoning. Yeah, that's really he can't Oh, and oh, you know that's a, that's really nice. The howling blast followed by the can't get out. Uh, oh, lunar flare will. is the name of that ability. I'm so used to not saying Taranda's ability <laughs> because she's such an uncommon here to say. But yes. it's cool to see Caterpillar taking a ton of damage. The grenade pushing him back, keeping him out as long as possible. The hook is not true. Yeah. KO is very low. Just uh, a lot of zoning there from SMG. I think they positioned themselves pretty well. Just, I mean, they didn't kill anybody, but they put themselves in a great spot to take that tribute. We see Soldier flying up just yeah. to make sure that he gets that experience. Because, uh, you know, they were soaking. Uh, Clairvoyant Gaming was soaking the top lane during this entire fight. And middle. And, and so yep. they were soaking all three lanes yep. versus one of SMG. Right. But they SMG did have. They, they, right. they knew they could fly up. They had an EXP lead right up until Falstead flew up. So uh, it was the right idea, but there was too much mobility. Uh, on SMG's side to actually get a solid experience leading right. forward. Uh, bottom bottom tower is one down, wall's almost down, and the other tower is almost down as well. Mm -hmm. Giants being picked up here by SMG, not using their bribe stacks just yet, just saying, look, we're going to grab these Giants, we have the time, mm -hmm. we're soaking all three lanes. I really enjoy that kind of play, because that way they can save four yeah, bribe stacks to pick right. up Knights instantaneously. Right, right. Okay, so we see uh, Battle Momentum picked up. I can't recall. Dreadnought oh, is no, going to fall here. No getting out of there. And no that pretty good. much means they have to give up this tribute, honestly. Unless they can get a counter kill, uh, they pretty yeah, much... Yeah, you may as well just stay soaking, but they're actually missing soak top lane. Yeah, you're right. They're going for it. Yeah, they have to be, and they're committed at this point. Well, if Chen's you're giving not up soak... Be there, so, they don't have so it's 4v4. 
Um, it, it's not the wrong call, but Clown picks it up before anyone's even. It, it, was, it ends up being the wrong call, I think, here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can say that. Um, yep, post fight, right. of course, but Chen's still soaking that top lane. They've got themselves almost a half level lead here. And whoa, okay, he has whoa, final order to get that, that cheeky whoa. drive. But does he pay for he it? He does. There's no way he's getting out of here. The wave of light is going to secure the kill. <gasps> <gasps> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> soldier, okay. soldier, soldier. Wow. In plain so sight. So close. He was like. You know, like God was coming down to grab him. He's like, "Yeah, hey, no, you're fine. Nope. <laughs> oh, come back to the light. He was dead. He was gone. Oh wow. God was coming yeah. down to grab yep. him. He was almost. He was almost out of there. But nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we see, we can look at the talent too now. Pretty standard Tyrande build. We thought we might see something unique, but we are not. We're seeing the, the uh, of course, the Pierce in power and the True Shot Ore coming sure, down, sure. the full on DPS. Standard cooldown reduction and lots of damage with Hedwig. Yeah. I mean, and you're going to have a pretty good idea where the enemy team's going to be stacking up based on the tribute fights. So it makes sense, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm still not convinced. I mean, they're, they're holding their own. They've got the advantage going into level 10, and it might actually make a big difference. Wow. It will make a big difference now. They Sol have to give this up. Soldier, I mean, how many deaths is that for him? I forget which key is death. We'll figure it out here. Production <laughs> uh, <Reduction> well, value. <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah, we do see Reign of Vengeance once again coming out of Clown. He's, uh, he's been hitting them for the most part in the last games that we've been uh, watching of his, so uh, why not stick with it? And he also has that battle momentum, so he gets the uh, you know reduced cooldown on that. Army of the Dead... Divine Storm, Storm Earth and Fire, Panda Pals as we know it best, and Shadowstock. No surprises there. On the other half, though, it looks like we're going to see Vile here. Future Vile. And uh, Emerald Wind, Shock and Awe, Ravenous Spirit, and Odin. Yeah. Other than the Vile, those are all pretty standard picks, too. But it's not too surprising. Uh, I actually mentioned it before we even hopped into this game using the Future Vile just to control the rest of the enemy team to make sure that yep. they don't get to Nazebo in time uh, while he's channeling that Ravenous Spirit. So if you leave Nazebo alone for the entirety of a team fight with Ravenous Spirit, 99% of the time you're going to win that fight. Um, so that's why you see he's such a common pick, because if you build the rest of your team around that strategy and get away with it, you're probably going to win. So why not take that hero? Why not go for it? Even if you get half of its effectiveness out of it, you are still probably got a pretty good leg up for the fight. So Atlanta with Tyrande here, using a Shadow Stock to get vision of the team. They know exactly where they are, and they know they have four in the middle. Right wing can, of course, face shift in at any point in time. Um, and they're just using the, the Owl there to just kind of keep zoning, scouting them out. They are up two tributes to one. Uh, Bribe Sex, we heard that ping right there, so that's an option if they yep. want to do that. But really, this tribute is a crucial point. Ooh, the Red mark. not saying, let's file for a while, Ooh. but it doesn't matter. He's going to die <laughs> immediately. Shockinar going down on Caterpillar. Caterpillar is very low. He has to back on up here with Army of the Dead there to heal him up, though. He'll be, you know, okay for now. Cloud, a very low Divine Storm, doing what it can, but KO is going to fall. Arthalon going in on Atlanta, but the nice, you know, the Lunar Flare, just enough to stun to get Atlanta out of here. Uh, no kill oh my on gosh, Hedwig, but pretty, so close. pretty back and forth. Yeah, pretty back and that forth. was. Two, two for one. one. Yeah. Uh, no huge sway there. But, I mean, that said, at this point in the game, we're seeing six kills to two. And it's a bit surprising to see that at Clairvoyant because up until this point, they've been fairly str uh, weak in the early game, and they don't seem to pick up their steam, and it looks as though Spanker is a bit out of position. Does he? Ha it says he has Panda Pals up. I don't know if it's bugged on the... I don't recall him using it in the last fight, so he's really being quite cheeky here. <laughs> Not using his cooldowns. Yeah, they tried to get the kill with the polymorph there. They tried to time it to, you know, make sure he can't use Panda Pals through it. Mm -hmm. um, I Oh my goodness. The oh wow. Flare. And the Howling Blast. Arthlon taking so much damage. Force really nice follow up there. Immediately. Bile once again going down, doing a lot here, but Spanker is kind of out of position. Of course, he should have Panda Pals available. There it goes. Yep. Uh, I think I think both these teams are just going to back up. Uh, I, I will probably give this one to SMG. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and grab the tribute. I don't think that they should push in. CG should not yeah. push in here. You don't have Panda Pals anymore. I mean, it's gonna square off in just a second here. There oh, it goes. I don't know. What. I just can't see this ending well for Clairvoyant, and they're going in. Caterpillar's taking a ton of damage. Full health coming back in here. Full mana, ready to sustain as much as he can. A nice, nice rain of vengeance. But is it enough? It does actually force them back, forcing an Emerald Wind wow. out, and they're gonna back up. These Lunar Flares are actually yeah, a huge threat in this match. And with Army of the Dead going down, once again, Arthas can just walk right in the middle. Shock and okay, yeah, pretty good. so much work, though. Matt Timmy is going to fall here. What? What? Where's He's the multi-shot? Where's the multi-shot? Uh, not going to be enough. Not actually Oh, oh he doesn't have enough mana, it looks like. Uh, okay, that fight did not go as I planned, as I thought it would. <laughs> and it looks as though SMG is coming in for round two. Man, he is biling it for days. He just doesn't stop spitting out yeah, that Yeah, the cooldown actually is uh, surprisingly short. I think it's 60 seconds. 
So we can say we have two rewinds, both right wing and false stats. So there, you know, yep. again, you have the double poly. That's a huge thing to do, and uh, of course, sprint on Zebo, relentless on Stitches, and relentless on Tychus. Right. Yes. Tons. Tons of relentless. It has uh, become quite the, you know, the pickup. You know, that's 50% reduction against any CCs that you might incur on yourself. So, uh, we've got four of them in this game. That's that's quite a few. Sprints, uh, people seem to be going for the universal talents on level 13 more often than not. They're quite good, rewind. Can't shake a stick at that. It's you're just getting all of your abilities refreshed completely off cooldown every 90 seconds. That's pretty good. So we see both teams are backing up. They're just taking uh, camps here and there. I imagine SMG, yep, they are taking their golem on their side of the map. Clairvoyant Gaming is taking their golem, so we're just going to see both golems push out. Now what each team chooses to do with these golems, whether they push with it, go back and defend each other's golems, we'll have to see. Uh, you know, I, I'm not really leaning towards one way or the other, and the teams are very even at this point, so I guess it's just uh, whoever feels more confident in the team fights. That said, I think Clairvoyant will push with theirs. I'm I'm impressed that Clairvoyant has ma maintained an, uh, pretty much an even game at this point in time. Actually, they're up and kill seven to four. Yeah. Uh, because Tyrande is a hero that scales later in the game. Ash now that they hit thirteenth, and power or excuse me, the um, Lunar Flare has 33% more width and range, mm -hmm. and that makes it such a huge, huge stun when you can hit two or three people right, right. with that stun, either before or after Howling Blast. It's just so Yeah, much we've seen those out. chain together already, and to, right. get to a really nice effect. Oh, this is a very nice positioning from Dreadnought. It's going to zone out a lot of Clairvoyant Gaming from trying to get into this tribute fight. Right, not the best reign of Vengeance. Mad Timmy has to use Emerald Wind almost right away. We have Spanker in the back line. The Ravenous Spirit is going down. He cannot interrupt that Panda Pals is used at the last possible second. Hook not going to get anyone. Arthlon is chasing everyone away, though. He has no fear. Uh, Spanker, again, is very, very, very low underneath that Panda Pal. Look, he's just barely oh, gets out of there. Is Soldier going to dash in to get this kill? It does, it's it's very it. risky. If he does... Oh, oh, wow, we're in to stop in the channel. Oh, but it's done. enough. It's, it's enough. enough to get the kill. So he, he forces out the shotgun on, dodges it. Oh, my okay, goodness. Okay. Uh, we see oh, wow. Okay, Dread. Nice hook there. And they're going to get the kill on Atlanta here. There's very few escape options available for Tyrande. Rusty as well. See, SMG has just turned the switch on and they say we're winning this game. That was a really big play by Dreadnought because when you actually cast Lunar Flare, you're actually immobile for about a second, not mm -hmm. even a full second. Mm -hmm. And Dread saw the opportunity of him turning sure, around to cast yeah. Lunar Flare and just threw the hook out and right. pulled her in. Really nicely done. Yep. And uh, I will, I'm going to rewind this back to the start of that fight. SMG's positioning was it was top notch. Yeah. They they had they had the putrid bile out in one lane. They dodged the the rain of vengeance coming down. That was an attempt to zone. And hey, you know, thumbs up to that. They got they got the fight out of it. Really, I, I know it was for the curse, but Clairvoyant really should have seen the positioning situation there and just backed up. There was just no way they were going to win that fight. And, and we saw the SMG. They picked up a couple uh, kills pretty cleanly in the fight. They were backing up, and then they they pushed even more good plays. And look at the damage they're doing. This is just destruction everywhere. Yeah, let's take a look at the damage on the map actually right here. Now Vala, of course, leading the damage. Tyrande doing pretty well, you know, second on the team there. Mm. Um, of course, this includes uh, creep damage as well. So, I mean, that's telling us that Tyrande's doing a good job pushing out as well as cleaning up waves, etc. So, yeah, I mean, not not too shabby for a Tyrande, which is rare to see. And it's interesting to see Atlanta go from the tank world to uh, playing as Tyrande. Yeah, I mean, other than that one hook that he just incurred there, he's been playing Tyrande pretty well so far. This is some of the best that I've seen. Not that I've seen too much Toronto play in the past couple months, but still, uh, it's looking pretty solid so far. You've seen me lose quite a bit on Toronto. <laughs> so that's about it. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see that they are grabbing the Giants for SMG on the bottom right side. The map is pretty much red all over except for that one golem that Clairvoyant picked up. Mm -hmm. Death timer on that is just about two minutes here. Middle of the map, both teams will be converging, but I seriously doubt we'll see an initiation until there is an actual mm. objective because there's no real reason to fight. Sure, sure. All right, Jake, actually, I got a question for you. Considering yes. that you are the, the support expert, I put air quotes around this. Uh, Taronda, we were talking about the Lunar Flare increase, and it's while it's nice, no rewind? No, this is the build I run. I think okay. Lunar Blazes too. A lot of people get rewind, but I don't think it's as beneficial as the increased range and size of the stun, because that stun can let you set up so many big plays, okay. especially looking at the composition. I mean, when you have stuff like Reign of Vengeance and Arthas for the Howling Blast, that's just a lot of guaranteed lockdown. When you combo sure. that together, okay. I think it's the right call. Um, this is literally the exact build I run. Okay. So I'm all for it. A lot of people <laughs> will get rewind instead, like you said. Um, of course, Ranger is a guaranteed. Everyone gets that and increases the damage done at range and up to 200 percent and increases the size of it and of course when you're hitting four or five Ooh, look people look at this oh, cool. shadow stock going in they're going to get the knights here 
but the Shadow Stock wow. Red Avenge is going in immediately. Emerald Wind's gonna have to be used here. Shock and Awe doing a lot of damage, but Arthas did is way too fall. much damage, if you ask yeah. me. The yeah. overdrive there and just Clairvoyant set themselves up to get wrecked by that Shock and Awe. And, and the Ravenous. I mean, yeah. oh. Oh, Soldier does yep. not want to let this prey go away. He is a beautiful hawk hunting for <laughs> mouse, and the mouse has been slain. And he's setting up for the... Does he have bribe stacks? Or, oh, they're just going for it. Yeah, why not? They got four people down. This is... They're going to clean this up very easily. They have an entire 25 seconds to push down uncontested on this keep. There's no way Taronda is going to be able to deflect this. And we're going to see a game one taken by SMG. Yeah. I uh, mean, really close game up until that one fight where SMG just had a... Like an insane, insane setup with uh, the future bile, and they just dodged all the right skills. They had the positioning locked down, and everything just spiraled out of control for Clairvoyant Gaming from that point forward. So, uh, that's SMG doing SMG stuff. They're, you know, they're known to be a very, very strong team in the NA scene. That said, Clairvoyant Gaming put up a pretty strong fight. I'm still not super convinced on the Taronda pick. Uh, I'll need to see a little bit more. I, I just, I'm not sure that that was the right pick over grabbing another damage dealer. Uh, it didn't lose them the game by any means. No, I that's mean, true. the Lunar Flares were really clutch. There were so many initiations yeah. that were forced upon by the Lunar mm -hmm. Flare, hitting two to three people at a time, peeling for people with it. You get a little bit of healing. I mean, her healing is not what you get her for at all. Sure, sure. And uh, the vision was definitely useful, mm -hmm. but like you said, it, it didn't end up making a difference. Now, yeah. SMG is a very hard team to beat, and I find getting Toronto to be interesting to say the least especially yeah. this kind of composition there were a couple fights where they were able to chain a ton of their their right. skill sets together and just you know pick up and really quick kills it, it did work it early worked, game but, but just i mean you were saying that toronto scales really nicely weight game but we just did not see that well that's the other thing that well no she she does though but the other thing you have to consider about the lunar blaze is like it, it was being used so frequently hmm. and it's it's honestly one of the best abilities in the game once you have the additional range on it to stop the Ravenous Spirit because you have such sure, a long range of the That's true. But it wasn't ever being used to do that. The Ravenous yeah. Spirit was always being held on. And with the damage coming out of False Set, Tychus and Nazeba was just too much for All them right. to like really not... I mean, you had to use it. They had to use that Lunar Flare sure. before that and they just couldn't keep it on. Keep, keep You know, hold on to it as long as they'd sure. like to. So, you know, GG by SMG. Yeah. But that's not it. That's only game one of this. That's true. We, do have, we have a two out of three here. So we are going to be going into game number two, I think, after a quick commercial yep. break. And we'll be back in just a second, guys. Stay tuned.